The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all who ate were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, our readings today are good news, filled with hope now and for the future. And it's sorely needed good news as we are continuing to go through this pandemic with all of the ups and downs, and now, of course, we all have to wear face masks, and who knows what's coming next. So it's good that we just meditate on these readings and see what they have to tell us. This good news kicks off in that second reading with the question, what can separate us from the love of God? And St. Paul's answer is nothing. And then he goes through a whole list of things, neither hardship or danger, nakedness, sword, death nor life, angels or demons, height nor depth, nor anything in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. What a statement. Now notice he doesn't include in that list sins, because of course he knows sins can separate us. And he'll deal with that in his letter to the Galatians, where he lists the sins that can separate us from God. But so long as we're in sanctifying grace, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. So how does Paul say that? Like, what's his rationale for making such a bold statement? Well, it's found in the first reading. It's found in Isaiah chapter 55, that beautiful reading about coming to this banquet. But actually, it precedes that, and we go back to Isaiah chapter 25, and we have what many scholars think is one of the most profound prophetic utterances in all of the Old Testament, and it's the great messianic banquet. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people a feast of rich foods and fine wines, where every tear will be wiped away, every sin removed, All the shame of the people will be taken away and death overcome forever. On that day, people will say, See, this is our God whom we hoped for. We rejoice and are glad that he has saved us. Now that's a tremendous prophetic statement by Isaiah way back in the 8th century B.C., 800 years before the birth of Christ. He's looking forward and the Spirit has given him this revelation that there will come a time when there will be a great messianic banquet and everyone is invited to it. And that's what we hear in the first reading, an explicit invitation in Isaiah chapter 55, where he says, come everyone who thirsts, come without price, without cost, it's free, and delight yourselves in rich food. Now there's two aspects to this great banquet. And it's listed here in that first reading. The first is a banquet of God's word because it says, incline your ear and listen so that you may live. So it's this great teaching that is being pointed forward when the Messiah comes to take on our flesh and then gives us the great teaching that he does, beginning with the Sermon on the Mount. But the second aspect of that banquet has to do with what he says there at the end He invites us to an everlasting covenant. Now, what does that mean? Well, we hear about this new covenant, this everlasting covenant, in the very words of Jesus. And where? At 
the Last Supper in the upper room on Holy Thursday, where Jesus brings out bread and wine. And this is after he's given his great discourse in the upper room. If you read John's Gospel, chapters 13 to 17, it's all laid out there for us. It's as if we're up there in the upper room with the rest because we hear all of this great teaching, the washing of the disciples' feet, and so on. But then when Jesus brings out the bread and he says, this is my body, take and eat. And then he brings out the wine and says, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the eternal covenant. So there he picks up from the prophetic utterance of today's first reading. The eternal covenant is in Christ's blood, now sacramentalized for us today. Now, to prepare the people for such a difficult teaching, Jesus performs a great miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish. And the apostles find themselves, of course, in an impossible situation because thousands of people have come to listen to Jesus' teaching and they're enthralled, but no one has thought to bring any food and they've been there all day and they're hungry and the disciples ask Jesus, why don't you send them home so that they don't faint? And Jesus says, well, you give them something to eat. And all of a sudden, you just kind of see the panic on their faces. But there's no need to panic. Jesus is present. And after all, the wine had run out at the wedding feast of Cana, and Jesus provided it, and he'll do the same with the bread. And in the background to all of this is the prophet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4. Because Elisha, if you remember, was given double the power of the great Elijah. Elijah was just this tremendously powerful prophet, great miracles, even raising someone from the dead. But Elisha had double that power, and so he's able to multiply 20 barley loaves to feed 100 men. That was considered a tremendous miracle because there was some left over. But Jesus changes not ten loaves, but five and two fish to feed over 5,000 men plus women and children. So there'd be many more thousand present. And then 12 baskets left over. So this is a tremendous miracle, and it's meant to be a support for the people to accept Jesus' teaching, difficult teaching as it is, as we saw in John's Gospel, the discourse in chapter 6, when people just simply walk away eat your body and drink your blood? They can't imagine it. But in this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, two points of interest. One, Jesus orders the crowd to sit down on the grass. Now that just seems like a throwaway statement. Why mention such a detail? And the other Gospels actually get more detail. They say, make them sit down on green grass. It's because... The only other place where that's mentioned, green grass, is in Psalm 23, the great song of the Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And so it goes on to say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This again gets back to that second reading. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And then it goes on to say, you prepare a table before me and my cup overflows. So there in that Psalm 23, you get a hint of the Messianic banquet once again. See, this is all connected. So that's an important point. And then the second is Jesus uses the words of consecration in the multiplication of the loaves and fish. where He says, he blessed, he broke, and he gave. The very words he will use at the upper room, the Last Supper, that we'll hear of shortly at the words of consecration at the Mass. So it's a very clear indication that he's talking about and he's preparing the people for the great sacrament of the Eucharist. This is what actually is the glue that holds us together, that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It's in his Eucharist. It's in his body and blood. And as St. Ignatius of Antioch famously said, the Eucharist is our medicine of immortality, the antidote to death. That's why I say today's readings are such good news. And they give us hope. Nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God. And so we're going to come today in this great Eucharistic banquet and receive the blood, the 
that sanctifies us and the bread that is Christ's very flesh. And as Jesus said in John's discourse in chapter 6, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. That's a present tense word, has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. With that, let us rejoice. Even though we're going through difficult times today, we can look at these readings and say, nothing will separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus.